Now for this example, there's a lot of information here. We have a hinge that could rotate about this point, and we have a couple moments applied. We have this 150 pounds, and this one, each one is equal and opposite, and then we have another couple moment, which is the F, the force here. One is negative force because it's the opposite direction of the other one, F, force. So the problem statement is determine the magnitude of the couple force F so that the resultant couple moment on the crank is zero. In other words, we want no rotation for this um, hinge here. So the resultant of all the moments must be equal to zero. So the sum of moments is equal to zero. My sign convention is counterclockwise is equal to positive, and it, they're going to res be respect to this hinge, the point at this hinge here. This is where the moment is with respect to that point. So now, as you can see, there's a lot of information here. We have lots of angles. Each angle of all the forces, you see this one's 30 degrees with respect to the horizontal, the other one's 30 with respect to the vertical, and so forth. Um, this um, object itself has a 45 degree angle on both sides and we have the dimensions, the lengths, 5 inches here, 4 inches here, where the forces are located. Now, this is where you could go force by force um, and break it up to its X and Y component because keep in mind, um, previously in previous examples, sometimes only one component cause the force but in certain instances such as this um, this specific case you will have a moment being caused by the x component as well as the y component of every force so just keep that in mind that when it comes to a force components just because um it doesn't necessarily mean that only one of the components will cause a force sometimes both of them cause a both of the force components cause a moment so just be careful with that so let's go ahead and analyze the first force being the 150 pounds of force um, with and that has a 30 degree angle with respect to the horizontal axis so the thing is split it to its x and y components so we have the y component going downward here and the x being this portion so it's nothing more than trig to solve for the component so remember keep in mind um whenever you're doing problems if it's simpler for you to draw each individual um force out with respect to that point where it is going to hinge about um then uh, more power to you sometimes it's a lot better because there's so much information you start getting confused it gets all cluttered so it's always best to draw it separately um, but in this case i'll do a little bit faster here so the sum of moments is equal to zero let's go with the first um the first force so for the first force we have 150 pound force and i'm basically getting the x component of that force so it's cosine 30 times the distance that's perpendicular to that force which is 10 inches times sine of 45 degrees now let me go ahead and draw this out just so we, so there won't be any confusion as to how i got this so as i stated previously sometimes it, it's better to redraw it and sometimes you could draw just right triangles which simplify the problem so here this is where that force is being applied 150 pound force and it's 30 degrees here so we have from the hinge point we have five inches and five inches so i know the total length here of this hypotenuse of this right triangle that i decided to draw is 10 inches and we were also given the angle right so we have 45 degrees drawn here so i just went ahead and drew a right triangle and basically with respect to the the x component of this force the distance that's perpendicular to that would be this distance here, this side of the triangle. So it's nothing more than sine 45 degrees times 10 inches, which gives us the length of this one. This is where I got 10 inch times sine 45 to give me the distance that's perpendicular with respect to the force of the X component. 
So keep that in mind. You need to find the distance that's perpendicular with respect to the X component force and the Y component force. If you do happen to break up the, the forces into components. So this is for the X portion. Now this moment is going to be causing a counterclockwise rotation along that hinge that we see here. So since this causes a counterclockwise rotation, then it's a positive. Now let's go ahead and look at the Y component. So the Y component is the, port, the component of that force going downward here. And one helpful thing as well is you could continue to draw that line of action of that force. And then we see that the, the perpendicular distance would be this side of the triangle for the Y component of that force. So remember, you could always draw the line of action. Um, let's go with the X component, you could draw it this way. And we would also be able to see, if you draw this line straight, this would be also the perpendicular distance here. And so, just keep in mind, you could get creative with it. There's more than one way to solve this problem. It all depends how you want to start it. In this case, I ended up drawing um, this triangle here, so I'll stick with that. So, I decided for the Y component, draw the line of action straight down, and the perpendicular distance here, which would be this part of the triangle. So in this case, for the perpendicular distance with respect to the Y component of this force would be the 10 inch times cosine 45 degrees. And this Y component would also be causing a counterclockwise rotation, which will make it a positive number. So let's go ahead and add it to the equation. So just to reiterate, 150 pounds times sine 30 because we're getting the Y component times the perpendicular distance, which is 10 cosine 45 degrees. So this um, is the moments added up only for one of the forces. Remember, there's still three more forces to go. So let's go ahead. Um, it's the same process. You draw triangles, simplify the problem, see um, how you could come up with that distance that's perpendicular to the, the forces with respect to each of its components. Um, sometimes it, you will find some problems where it's very conveniently the, the resultant force is already um, perpendicular to the distance from which you're already trying to solve. It's already part of the dimension, but in this case, um, that's not the case and we had to find those perpendicular distances. So let me go ahead and write it out for all the forces for this equation, the sum of moments. So now we finally get this very long equation for the sum of forces of moments. And of course, all this is equal to zero. And we do have the variable f in this case. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more by multiplying all these numbers and just factoring out the f and solve. So this is how it looks a little bit more simplified. Once we add all these numbers, it's 1138.31. Take away these um, constant coefficients along with the force F here. And we just, sim we just add the Fs here together, which gives us 1138.31 take away 5.87 F is equal to zero. Then we move the F to the other side and we divide both sides of the equation by 5.87. And that finally leaves us with F being equal to 194 pounds. So this is finally our answer after all that work. So sometimes it could be simple and easy. Other times it requires multiple steps to get there. Now, another way that, that could have been used to solve this same problem is, let's go back to the drawing here. So you know how in this case we decide to split up the components into the X and Y component, get the moment each of the component that cause for each of the forces. Another way is to get of each of the components, basically project it, project it to the specified angle such that it will be perpendicular to the lengths that are shown. So in this case, let me draw this out. So this is the length. So from the hinge to this force at the end, we would essentially project 
at what angle is this perpendicular to that line? Now, the very convenient reason why we would do this is because we already have the lengths. In this case, it'll be the perpendicular length 10 inches from the hinge point to this force that's being projected that's already a right angle with that distance. But the trick with this is finding what that angle is. So it's some um, geometry, some trig, trying to find what that angle is for each of the forces. And you only um, project this force onto that path, which is already a right angle with this line here. So that's another way that could be a little bit simpler if you have the hang of trig, if you kind of just by visual inspection could identify the, the angles that are missing to project these forces that are already at a right angle with respect to the dimensions that are seen here. Um, so there's always, um, sometimes there's more than one way to solve the same problem. One way may be a little bit longer, the other one may be simpler, but you know, it's up to you to decide to see what's more obvious for you. Some people, it may be too difficult to identify and so you go this longer route, which is perfectly fine. And so this is how you apply the concepts of moments as well as the summation of the resultant moment um, to be able to find any unknown to the particular systems. In this specific problem, it was to solve the force such that there was no moment about that hinge.